Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Time to get cracking for the day. Man, I spent, I spent a lot of time chasing parts. It sucks. This is the oil pressure sensor for the oil pressure gauge. Had to get a adapter to screw it into and then another adapter to screw it into the engine. So this is the 14 by 1.5 threads that'll screw into the engine. Then the adapter screws into that. I gotta tighten that down so that don't leak. Then I gotta screw this in so it don't leak and screw this in the engine, plug that sensor in there. So he'll have an oil pressure gauge. He won't have an idiot light with this, but I did find those adapters online. I ordered some, but it wasn't gonna be here today and it might not have been here tomorrow. So instead of wasting a day of labor, I got this for the meantime. So I'm gonna put this in there and when I come back through here, I'll put a sensor in to give him his idiot light back. So this is the common thing people do and get rid of the idiot light. You really don't need both, but hey, if you want both, you can have both. Got the fuse holder for the AFR gauge. Got a bunch of zip ties to zip tie that stuff down in here. So let me go ahead, pop this hood, put this oil sensor thing in here, then get inside and wire in these gauges. I'm two and a half hours in. I went under the car, screwed that sensor in, Screw the extension in. I put thread sealer on that. Plug that sensor in. Now yesterday I run all the wires through the firewall passage. Now today I had to run a vacuum line through there for the boost, which was hard. I hooked that up right there and zip tied it. I went down along the wire harness, zip tied it on the transmission O2 sensor wire harness, zip tied it on the bottom of the back air box bracket along with the wire to the oil pressure sensor along with a wire to the AFR sensor along with a wire to the rear O2 sensor for the AFR sensor and ran those through the firewall even the AFR sensor thing and I have two extra wires going through there in case somebody ever needs them. That's a tight port now. So there's a yellow wire there and a red wire there that somebody can use if they ever need to get to the firewall. This thing was full, so no need to have that on there no more. So I got all that stuff done out here. I'm buttoning this up. I put that wire connector on that rear O2 sensor. Vass had a good instruction for that, which I'm grateful for. And I buttoned all that up. So technically I could close this hood and just work on the inside. Now the challenge on the inside, I'm gonna make sure I have enough slack on the pillar to pull the pillar away and also to pull the gauges out if I have to. But really those gauges are really hard to get out of that pillar. They fit so tight. So that may not be necessary. As long as I make enough space, I can pull this pillar in here and lay it on the steering wheel. So I'm going to take this pillar and cut it open so that I can get this other pillar on here. And wire everything down through here. It's really hard to get this wire harness around here. But I'm going to take this dash loose on this side and get those wires down through there somehow. And wire this stuff up man there's like zero room to run a wire harness down here but i gotta get the wire harness for the afr gauge up there the other wire harness for the afr gauge wires for power wires for switch power a vacuum line i can't run the vacuum line for the glow shift up there because it's too soft it collapses real easy so i have to use a vacuum line that i bought a lot harder to collapse 
Since I'm pretty much done working under the engine, I'm gonna clean my hands. So when I work on the inside, I won't get everything all dirty and greasy in here. The first thing I did was fitted the gauge. Really, the funnest gauge is the boost gauge. The least important gauge, I think, is oil pressure. You rarely will have something go wrong with that. And the critical gauge is the air-fuel ratio. So I'm going to put that down on the bottom where it'd be easy to see that. Uh, put the boost gauge in the middle and put the oil pressure up top. Now I had to file the holes open a little bit, make sure they get a real tight fit. I don't normally bracket them, but this A and E gauge is so short. See how short that is? I'm going to bracket that one. These other two stick out real far. I'm not going to bracket them. Now I got four wires coming up here. I got a ground, I got a constant power, I got a switch power, and I have a light switch. I'm pretty sure this yellow is a light switch. They're all the same with the glow shift. See this dude? The yellow is the constant power. The headlight switch is the orange, and the red is the ignition switch. So you want a constant power source, which is yellow. So I need to get four wires up here that I'm going to have connected down there. And I'm going to have these two gauges on the same deal. Uh, spliced together with that. Then I also need to run the two harnesses up to here and uh, two harnesses to here. One of these harnesses is just the power or lines like this the other harness came from the engine bay from the sensor it's right there so let me go ahead and hook this one up so i can hook those all up to that those four wires and then yeah it's got a harness there this harness here matches the beef gauge harness then i gotta run three harnesses up there with four wires and it's tight, so I took the dash loose there, and let me get to work on that. I dropped my vacuum tube down there first. I pulled this screw out of the dash, wiggled this A-pillar out of the way, and I was able to drop this tube down the side here. And once it went down the ear, it kind of came out right under this kick panel deal. So I dropped five wires down there. It came out the same way. I got them pulled through. Now I pulled an extra wire through with those. Now I taped this end to the three wire harnesses that have to come back up through there. So I'm going to try to fish them up through this crack. Hopefully there's enough room for them to come through there and I'll be good to go. So let me pull this and pull these up through here carefully and have everything I need up here to hook up to the gauge pod. Then I'm gonna cut this A pillar so all this extra stuff will fit in there. I worked it up and through here. So let me go ahead and hook up all these wiring and vacuum tube up here and then pull everything to a good position down, secure this and then wire everything under the dash. My goal is that I could lay this pillar pod like this on the dash and hook everything up. So let me pull each wire up here one by one. This has to go up here. My boost gauge is going to connect there. Then this harness has got to connect to the AM and this got to connect to the AM. And then these wires will connect to these. I could twist these on. Or I could solder them on. Really doesn't matter. Soldering is probably better. Twisties will work because this is not an area that should be having any stress or water or nothing like that. But I got those quick solder connections. I'll try that without damaging my pillar pod. But these wires, they melt really easy with uh, heat. So I may not put too much heat on them. Got this together. Gonna take me a little break, get us something to eat, and I'm gonna secure this post, and I'm gonna deal with the wires down there, man.
this does take time. You do need to wind up and tuck your loose wires. It wouldn't be a bad idea to zip tie some of these bundles here to keep them out of the way. Make sure you don't crimp your vacuum for your boost gates. All right, let me go eat my lunch. Had to hook my dimmer up here on the headlight switch. When the headlights come on, this green going up to the orange up here will come on to dim my gauges. Gorilla tape and two zip ties. This is on the 70 series cars. Yes, I'm still at it. 618. I got all the wiring done under here. I need to ground this to a bolt under here. Probably that bolt right there. And hook up this boost line. I hope I, this thing has a, yeah, it has a, a T there. Crap. It's a splitter. I needed a T. Well, um, maybe I could plug off one end of it. Just put a screw in it or something. Let me hook up the boost. I got everything down there stowed away. Ground wire hooked up. I come up here to fix this light and this shifter area. And this center console is not in properly. It's up in the air for some reason. And I went in here and there's a bunch of stuff jammed down under the parking brake thing. So I'm going to see if this thing has this installed in it. And if so, I'll put a light in it. But this may be it here. It may not even be down there. I don't know why it wouldn't be. But let's try to put a light in this center console. All you got to do is pull those two bolts out there. Remove this trim here. Unplug those two plugs. And lift this center console up and out. Over the shift knob. I may pull this shifter out of park. Down the low to get it up over there. And see why it's not sitting right now. Look at here, folks. Starting out almost 90 PSI. Got vacuum. About 14, 15. And our AFR is not working. Figure out what's going on with that. I'm not sure what's going on with my AFR gauge. It obviously has some kind of power because it's doing that. Um guessing that there is something wrong with the sensor power could be a bad gauge I got a gauge in my car I'm gonna swap it in here and see if that solves it another person had a bad gauge so let me go ahead and swap out the gate see if that fixes the problem I think I seen on the oil filter that the oil was changed at 191 this thing has 204 now. So the oil had not been changed in a long time. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.